Hey everyone. So today, uh, or over the last week, I've been getting a lot of emails about uh, combo systems. So today we're actually going to put together a quick combo system. Uh, so let's go ahead, see what it looks like, and then we'll, I'll show you how to do it. So I have my little melee guy here and my targets. I'm just going to set up a quick, you can see I do three attacks. And he does a little combo, right? So, and I can also do two, and I go back. So, I mean, I'm not, this isn't hard-coded or anything. That guy missed on the first attack. Uh, so, this is all just using the rules within Able. So, let's go ahead and look at it and set one up. So, the way I'm going to set this up is I'm going to have three abilities. And I'm going to branch between them. And all a branch is, is a, a branch is just saying, hey, I want to switch to this ability based on some logic. So that's what we're going to use to kind of put our combo together. So let's go ahead and build our ability. It's going to use the base class. I'm going to name it Melee Combo 1. Even though each of these is going to be attack. So let's do... Melee combo two and melee combo three. So let me go ahead and open up my first one. This is going to be kind of the start of my attack. So I already got my sword guy in here. Let me go ahead and turn off my camera and kind of that extra info. Now I'm going to add a animation attack, or animation rather. And the one I want is a pommel. So I'm going to get one without any root motion. And all these animations are coming from Kubold's Sword Anim Pro set. So I'll put a link in that dis in the description. Uh, which means, unfortunately, I can't give this out after I'm done with it because it's using someone else's assets from the store. So, but feel free to grab them or grab any assets, put what you need. The, the logic is the same. The assets are, you know, just, or the animations are just flavor. So you can put whatever animations you need in. Able doesn't care, right? So here I'm actually setting up to use the ability animation node uh, logic for the play animation. And this is just a special node that comes with Able that lets me feed in these animations and it automatically blends between them. So uh, I have a description, oh, I have a tutorial for how to set that up and kind of what that is uh, at the, with the Able documentation. So I'll link that as well. But now I should have my animation. So if I play, I get kind of like a quick pommel strike, which will be like a good combo opener, right? So let's go ahead, add my collision. I'm gonna do a collision query. Uh, I'm going to do just a simple cone, uh, 1.5 meters. I'm going to make sure I do the pawn layer because that's where my, the things I'm interested in kind of querying live is on the pawn layer. And then I'm going to add a filter to filter myself out because I don't want to get hit accidentally by my own attack, right? So this filter will run after on all these quer on on this particular query uh, and filter me filter me out automatically. And there's tons of filters in here. Again, all that's on the uh, documentation website. So that's set up. Now let's add our damage. And since this is the first uh, attack, I'm gonna keep it pretty low. I'm gonna leave it at one. And I'm going to damage my targets. I also need to go back here and make sure I copy the context. Which, if you didn't watch the last video, copy the context simply copies the results of this query into my ability context, which lets other tasks use that. So that's what that's setting up. And I'm also going to set a dependency for my apply damage on the collision query. So now it doesn't matter if these guys uh, or what time apply damage happens it's always going to wait until collision query completely finishes before it actually executes. 
So that's our first part of our uh, attack. You can see if I show show my collision queries, we got our kind of hue app. That actually showed me I'm not doing 2D, which I do want 2D. There we go, perfect. So that's one attack. So let's go ahead and do the next two real quick. So play animation, uh, attack, move. I think it's medium. And I'm going to do what kind of a right down swing. Sure, so that works. Uh, again, I'm going to fill out my animation info here. Just kind of fun uh, basic stuff to do. Uh, let me go ahead and see it. Okay, that works. I'm going to add my damage, or sorry, my collision first, then my damage. So collision query, let's see where, yeah, it's pretty good. Let me see. Right there. Uh, okay, collision shape, cone. Uh, 1.5 meters, 2D, pawn, filter myself out, and copy the context. Now I'm going to add a damage, and since this is the second part of our combo, I'm going to give it a value of 2. Uh, I don't want to add, attack my target. Now someone actually emailed me over the weekend, or last week rather, saying, Hey, like, does the system support dynamic values rather than these like hard coded values? And the answer is yes. So these hard, let me set up my dependency real quick. Uh, so these values right here are just base damage. If I actually wanted to calculate damage for every actor in my query, I can actually do that in the graph. There is a function, not that function, uh, that you can override called calculate damage for actor. And this call or this method gets called for every actor that's about to be damaged. So you can then query your base damage, which is that value I said previously. You can query the actor's resists, their, uh, you know, if they're vulnerable, whatever, do whatever math you need and then return a value and that value will get uh, used as a damage rather than this kind of raw base damage value. So again, that's, that's, that's all inherent in tables. So that's just there and it works. Uh, so that's our second skill. So let's finish it out and then we'll actually set up our uh, logic. So this one I want attack move slow. So this is our finisher. So we're gonna do like, uh, we can do a whirl. Sure, why not? So, ability animation node, character state, ability. Let's see what that looks like. And it's got a lot of movement. I don't like that. I'm going to do another one. Okay, that works. Uh, so let's see. So a little bit before that. So let's add our query. Let's finish playing. Uh, add our query. 
again. Oh, that capsule cone. 1.5 meters, 2D. On our pond layer. Copy to context and filter ourselves out. And then I want to also do my damage. And since this is kind of the last big finishing hit, I'm going to give this one a value of three. So if you go through the whole combo, you'll do a total of six damage, right? One plus two plus three. And my dependency and perfect. So we have our three separate abilities, right? So if I go in here and I change my guy to use melee combo one, which is our pommel attack, and I push the button multiple times, he's just gonna do his pommel, right? So it should be five of these. Yeah, so we obviously don't have any combo logic hooked up. So let's go ahead and hook that up. Now this is where branching comes in, right? And so I'm going to add a branch. And I'm going to start it after... Let's move it after kind of our collision query happens. In fact, if I want, I can even add a dependency on our apply damage. So now the branch won't even start looking until it's actually done its damage. So now, so with the branch, I'm just going to point it at the next ability, melee combo 2. And then I'm going to add a condition. And a branch condition is just some condition that's going to get run uh, every frame for the length of this task uh, and if it succeeds it's going to branch into this ability it's going to move to this next ability so I'm actually going to use a input uh, conditional I'm going to add my I think it's called attack uh, key uh, and then there's a couple other options like uh, you have to actually release the, uh, the key, you can't just hold it uh, to go from branch to branch or from uh, for the branch to succeed. Uh, but I don't care if the player holds it, that's fine by me. Uh, there's also an option to pass all conditions that you set up versus just passing one. Since I only have one, this is kind of a no op, right? This doesn't do anything. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So now, if I do my pommel, you see I go right into my next thing. And it only takes uh, two hits, right? Because I'm doing one damage the first time, two damage on the second attack, and then I do that whole combo twice. So I'm doing six damage to a dummy that has five. So, and you can see, you know, I don't, I don't branch to the third one because I don't have that logic set up. So now, we'll just set that up. So if I add a task, add a branch, uh, I'm going to add my dependency on apply damage. I'm going to branch to melee combo three, which is our third attack in our combo. Add a input and set it to attack. Now, if I wanted to, I could also do, like, uh, alt attack, right? I could set up another input and have another branch under here where, okay, the player got to this ability, and then they did right-click instead of left-click. And left-click is what my attack is set to, right? Well, then I could just set my branch, I could set another branch uh, task here with a condition that looks for right-click, and then goes to, like, a attack number four, right? Or a low or high attack. So... Now, if I go in here, one, two, and three, chop, right? 
one, two, and three. So you can see, and obviously if I stop my logic, right, I don't do anything that makes the branch proceed, then the ability just ends, right? So the task is saying, or the ability is saying, oh, okay, I didn't get what I was looking for, so I'm just going to stop. Versus, oh, okay, I did get what I'm looking for, so now I'm going to move to another ability under the hood, right? So that's it for uh, branching. It's actually pretty simple. It's also a very powerful system. You can hook up, you know, obviously combos through this. You can branch, you know, kind of one ability to uh, many others, uh, depending on some type of input press. And you can do multiple uh, input press conditions, too. So if you wanted to say, well, I want them to hold shift and left click, you would just have a shift uh, action and a left click action and put action check in there. And the system would handle it fine. Uh, and again, this is all uh, without recompiling anything. I didn't, uh, I didn't make a specific blueprint or anything. Uh, this is all data driven through Able. So that's it for branching. I do want to show one other thing real quick. And this is a uh, update that's going to be going out later this or uh, this upcoming week uh, is tasks now have a verbose mode and what this verbose mode does if I turn it on I'm actually going to turn it on for my collision query and my apply damage is it will print out a bunch of debug information for you to help you know to help you see you know, why things are happening the way they are. So if your ability isn't behaving as you expect, you can turn on this verbose mode and it'll handle it or it'll show you. So now if I go in here, right, you'll see that I kind of get this text where it's saying, oh, okay, here's what I found. I found one entity and I'm doing one base damage or I call it calculate damage with a base damage of one. Uh, I don't have that overridden, so it's just returning one and I applied it to a target mannequin. So uh, this is a super helpful uh, tool for your designers and programmers to kind of see, oh, what's going on, right? Uh, I've actually been using it myself quite a bit because it's, you know, it's far easier to do this than to kind of walk through the code and all that stuff. Uh, so that'll be going out in a free update. Uh, there's options for it, too, uh, where you can turn off the echo to screen. You can have it just go out to the output log. Uh, you can turn that off if you want. Uh, so, And again, it works for every task. So I'm, I, the abilities themselves already have pretty good logging in them, I think. So unless I hear differently, I'm probably not going to uh, expand that system into the ability themselves and leave it for tasks, whereas what which is where you'll spend most of your time debugging if you have to do any debugging. But uh, yeah, that'll be going out as a free update. So I hope you guys look forward to that. And as always, thanks for watching. Uh, and well, I guess I'll show you it working. Let's do a real quick multiplayer test. So there's my guy. There's my combo. As always, it works out of the box. A uh, little closer. There we go. So, and now he's stuck. There he goes. That's just because this guy has a weird animation state machine set up. As always, Able works out of the box uh, with networking. So you notice I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to change anything. It just works, uh, which is always nice. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.